Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love this sound. I love hearing the people of God fellowship with each other. I love hearing you encourage one another. I love seeing you embrace one another through a hug or a handshake. This is the power of the body of Christ, that we are strength and light and life to one another. That's important today. Whew. And it's important because every time we come together, no matter where you see yourself in life or how you diagnose your own life, it's going to be all right, and oftentimes we get that when the people of God surround us and we, the light bulb goes off and we're like, wow, God really is going to take care of everything. He's able to. The Lord is able. And uh, so he's, he's just an amazing, amazing God. If you have young people that are going to youth camp today, we will be leaving the church yeah. at... They get excited. Uh, no, I enjoy doing it. I've been working the camps for uh, 22, 25 years, something like that. But be praying for us. So we're going to be leaving the church at 2 p.m. sharp, okay? Now, what that means, 2 p.m. sharp means that we are loaded and driving out of the parking lot at 2 p.m. Last week, we had, uh, you know, we were packing the truck at 2 p.m., and leaving at 2.30. So we'd like to leave by 2, uh, if at all possible, and then pray for us. We have camp this week, camp next week. Next week's 9 to 11, then 6 to 8 year olds. And so there's just a lot of uh, good things that, that are going on there. Speaking of youth camp, uh, this last week, you know, I think I told you last week how Healing Waters has... Uh, the top enrollment, and when you look at all the camps put together, we've actually set our, broken our own record of kids going to camp, which is an awesome thing. But one of the cool things that I like to celebrate is when, when folks from here are recognized, we had over 300 ca campers this week. And in 300 campers, yep, yeah, in 300 campers, um, you have uh, maybe... At the most, nine from boys, nine from the ladies that are nominated for what's called Super Camper. And what they do is you have a winner and you have a runner-up. The winner gets a full scholarship to the next year's youth camp. The runner-up gets a half scholarship to um, the youth camp. And one of our young men actually won the full scholarship and was... You want me to, hang on, let me tell you his name before you, before you start clapping. Y'all clap every sentence I say. Hang, hang on, hang on. All right, just get, give, me, give, me, give me 10 seconds. Uh, Connor, uh, Connor Osborne, Connor, stand up right back there. Uh, he, uh, so we are, we are proud of him and... Uh, the Lord did some amazing things in his life at youth camp this last week and many of their lives, of which we are definitely grateful for that. This is, uh, everybody knows what this is. It's uh, one of them little scan key barcode things, right? Um, just letting you know, if you live in Isle of Wight County, you want to pick one of these up, you can scan this in your phone and it takes you to a survey for the compre pre comprehensive plan that the Board of Supervisors is doing I'm trying to get it into every church's hand because we want the people of God to weigh in on the comprehensive plan on what, how, what you see the community and, and growing and, and what you would like to see or not see or, or whatever the case may be. So um, as, I, as I said, we were going to introduce technology into the county more and more. So this is a part of this plan. You can do it online with this or I have the actual paper hard copy or paper copies out there. If you say, well, I don't know how to do them computer things, well, that's all right. We have the paper things out there. So you can, you can pick up a paper thing, okay, and fill that out. 
and just get it back to me and we'll make sure we, we want you to be a part of that and, and, and take part in that today. If you have your Bibles, let's go very quickly to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. If you've been in church or around church any length of time, this story is going to be familiar. But I want to kind of bring it to us in a different light today and understand fully the picture and what was going on in the scripture. Joshua chapter 6 beginning in verse 1 says, Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. And none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Am I hearing you right? You're going to give us the city. It's going to be given to our hand. And you want us to walk. You want us to just walk. <laughs> you ever felt a nudge in a direction that, that maybe God was leading you in, but it didn't make any sense? Yes. Verse 3, you shall march around the city, all you men of war, you shall go around the city once. This you will do for six days. For six days, we're just going to walk around this big old wall. Not going to do anything. Not going to shoot anybody. Not going to knock anybody off the wall. Not going to grab anybody. Can't get in. We're just, we're taking a walk. Verse 4, and seven priests shall bear forth seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpets. And it shall come to pass when they make a loud blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people will shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Father, would you add your blessing to your word, anoint our ears to hear. Give us clarity, today, clarity in your word today. Hide me behind the cross. Let us see you today and understand what you are saying to us today. Because there are times, God, if we are honest, you just don't make sense. But help us to trust you so that the kingdom of God might be born out of our lives. Help us. If we go through the act of saying that you control everything then let us be obedient even in the things that seem a little strange. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but if I'm kind of looking at this passage of Scripture from a warrior mindset, um, because the Bible says that the Lord says to Joshua, and I didn't read the whole story. You know the story. They, they walk around six days, seventh day, seven times, shout walls flat, right? Great victory. But let's rewind. Can you imagine Joshua going back to the camp and saying, all right, guys, I've got God's plan for what we are going to do. And they say, oh, man, this is great. What is God's plan? We are going to, are you ready? We are going to walk. You, you mean we're going to walk with our spears and our swords? We're going to walk. We're going to walk. We're going to pick them off the wall when they're peeking over the top at us. Is that what you mean, Joshua? No, we're just going to walk. Matter of fact, we're not just going to walk, but we are going to walk silently. Wait a minute. Those jokers are on the top of the wall, probably hurling insults at us, and you want us to walk. Yeah, God said he wants us to walk. Are you sure that you heard him correctly? My question for you today is what do you do when God doesn't make sense? What do you do when what he deals in your life and pushes your life towards, 
What do you do when it absolutely breaks the confines of understanding? What do you do when everything you're hearing is totally opposite of what you're seeing? It's a difficult place to be. It's a hard place to be. It's one of those places that even though you've seen the Lord split the Red Sea, you've seen him provide in the camp of Israel while in Egypt, you've seen the pillar of cloud by day, the pillar of fire by night, but you have never seen Jericho before. What do you do when God said, everybody else would have said, guys, man of war, we are going to taunt them until they open the gates and we are going to have us a brawl. But God said, all I want you to do is walk. I don't want you to talk. I don't want you to scream. I don't want you to do anything else. I want you to walk. Now, Joshua is very quick to run back to the camp and say, oh, we've got a plan. Our plan is, are you ready? We've got a plan. Our plan is we're going to walk and we're going to trust God. And they're looking at him, seriously? With that in front of us, that's all we're going to do? Joshua would say in the conversation, yes, that is all that we are going to do. What amazed me is the songs that we sang today and how the first song was talking about God's way, God's will. I didn't coordinate the worship songs. I didn't talk to them about what I was talking, going to be preaching about today. But it seems like we are being pointed today around this concept of God's will and God's way. What do you do when he doesn't make sense? When it seems like that you've had more loss in your life than luxury. When it seems like you've had more pain than progress. When it seems like you've had more trial than you've had triumph. What do you do when it looks like the God of heaven is letting you get crushed? What do you do when everything in front of you screams you're not going to win this time? What do you do when everything in front of you says to you it's not going to come to pass? What do you do when there's ancient voices whispering in your ear and saying to you, you'll never make it in this life? It's saying to you, you're never going to amount to anything. Saying to you, it'll never get put back together. What do you do when God says, just take a walk? Just take a walk. See, we've got to back up a little bit to understand what's going on. And what we back up to find in Joshua chapter 5 is an encounter, a significant encounter. You see, you and I are not able to trust God with the impossible unless some things happen before we get there. Joshua chapter 5, beginning in verse 13, the Bible says, And it came to pass... When Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes, and a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you for or are you for our adversaries? Verse 14, and he, capital H, he said, No, but as commander, capital C, of the armies of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on the earth. Don't worry about it. Joshua fell to his face on the earth and worshiped and said to him, what does my Lord say to his servant? So here's here's the story right there. This is Jesus in the Old Testament. This is a portrait of Jesus. This is, it's him. Because, and the reason I say that, if it was a simple angel, an angel would not ever entertain worship. Ever. It will, the angel will not. Watch what the scripture says. What does my Lord say to his servant? <laughs> Seems a little odd, the command. Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, what? Do what? Take your sandals, take your shoes off, right? 
For the place where you stand is holy, and Joshua did so. Now, what you have to understand about this passage is, now, now when I was growing up in church, when I was growing up, <laughs> we would have some of our elderly folks that would come into church and they'd have sandals on with pantyhose on. Okay? And, and they would walk in, and they'd be sitting there, and you know, as worship is going on, they would, they would just kind of kick them, them things off. And, and just kick them under the seat, kick them under the pew. And I can remember as a young man sitting in the crowd going, oh, it's getting ready to stink in here. <laughs> you would have high heels and tennis shoes and everything coming off. People would take their shoes and I'm like, my Lord, is this a take off your shoe epidemic? Because it seemed like in certain aspects of the church that certain fads existed. And I thought, oh boy, here's another one. Kick off your shoes. And I would always wait for some odor to hit the scene. And it never happened. But I always wondered, you know. All right, take the sandals off your feet for the place that you stand is holy. I can kind of get that, but there has to be something else to the story. It's not just... Kick off your shoes because God's in front of you. Or kick off your shoes because God is around you. There's got to be something more to this kicking off of your shoe. You've got to understand that Jericho, up until this point, Jericho is the largest, most fierce obstacle that they are ever going to face. They've never been against a fortified wall that is so wide that you could drive two chariots side by side on the top of it. They'd never been against such a city that was stronger in physical defenses than they were. You see, under Moses, they ran away from this place. If you remember the stories in Moses. Moses sent the spies out to spy out the land, remember? And, he's, and the 12 spies come back. Ten said no, two said go, and the heart of the children of Israel were turned against the plan of God, and they didn't go, although God was leading them. So I started to think, what is the significance of shoes? I mean, Joshua has the same test that Moses had. You remember when Moses goes to the back of the mountain of Mount Sinai? And the presence of God is upon the bush that is burning but not consumed. And what does Moses do? Takes off his shoes. It's got to be some something, some kind of a reason. What did it mean? And although Moses did, he never followed through with the significance of the shoe. In order to understand this, in order to really grasp in our heart and mind on what this is, we have to look at another generation because it gives us the, the, the reason for this in Ruth chapter 4. I want you to see this because this messed me up. Let me, let me show you a little trick. So, if you ever, if we ever call out a scripture from up here and you're like, I don't know where that's at. There's a little place in the front of your Bible. This is a great help. I'm telling you, this right here is a great help. And you can go and say, Ruth, 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 where is Ruth, 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 Ruth? Oh, Lord, help me. Where is Ruth? Oh, it's on page 390. Whoo, thank the Lord. I don't have to look like I'm thumbing through the New Testament to find the book of Ruth in front of everybody. So that's just to help you because I know sometimes we're, we're flipping through and I, and I can remember there were times that I'd end up in the back of the Bible trying to find something in the Old Testament and, and yeah, so anyway. Ruth chapter four tells us what the purpose is in verse seven and following. It says, now this was the custom in former times. Look at your neighbor and say former times. This is the custom in former times in Israel concerning redeeming and exchanging. To confirm anything, to confirm anything, one man took off his sandal 
and gave it to the other. Hmm. And this was the confirmation in Israel. Verse 8, Therefore the close relative said to Boaz, Buy it for yourself. So he took off his sandal. I'm going to read it to you from New Living Translation. says, Now in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off their sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalizing a transaction in Israel that the one relinquishing the property would take off their shoe and give ownership of the property to the other person that had purchased or redeemed the property. You say, hmm. So we understand from the book of Ruth that taking off your shoe or taking off your sandal is a whole lot more than just saying, well, we need to take our shoe off because it's holy ground. That's a part of it. But the other significant part in it is that when we're in the presence of God, that there has to be something on the inside of all of us that says, I've got to trust God with everything I am. And because I trust Him with everything I am, when I'm in His presence, I'm going to relinquish ownership of my life before Him. Moses would kneel and he'd take off his sandals. He was saying, God, whatever you want to do in my life, I am not my own, I am yours. When, when Joshua took off his sandals, he was saying, God, I'm not, you, I'm not my own. I'm yours. Whatever you want to do, I will listen to you. It doesn't make sense. Jesus is walking around the triclinium table and he looks at his disciples and he says to them, hey, get ready. I'm coming around the table and I need you to take off your sandal because I'm going to wash your feet. Remember the story. And what does Peter do? Peter says, oh no. Lord, you can't wash my feet, but I tell you what, why don't you take off your sandal and let me wash your feet? And what did Jesus say? He said, Peter, if you don't take off your sandal, if you don't let me do this, you have no portion in my kingdom. What was he saying? Peter, if you can't, you don't, you can't expect God to be in your control, but what you can can expect is that when you give God control, he will orchestrate every step of your life. They're getting ready for the largest significant struggle that they'd ever face. And the first test wasn't, can you march around the wall? He'd have never got, I submit he'd never got to the wall. Had he not taken his shoe off, he said, when he found out it was God, see, you can't be around the presence of God and not know it's not God. You know what I mean? So Joshua's standing there. I'm sure every fiber of his being is permeated, and he knows this is not an angel. Why? An angel would have said, whoa, get up, get up, don't bow to me. It was the Lord. The Lord himself showed up at the biggest portion of Joshua and the nation's need. And the first thing he wanted to ask, you remember the question, Joshua says, who are you with? Are you with us or are you against us? And he goes, neither. At least not yet. Because at that moment, the response from the Lord was accurate. He wasn't on either side yet. He said, as the commander of the armies of the Lord, I, I'm not on your side. I'm not on their side. I'm on our side, God's side, right? And his invitation to Joshua was, come to our side. Come to God's side. Don't handle this on your own. Come to God's side. 
Don't try to do it out of your own strength. Come to God's side. Don't try to figure it out on your own. Come to God's side. And Joshua stands there in his presence and he takes his sandal off and he says, all right, I'll do it your way. And when he does, he hears this directive from God and God says, I want you and all the children of Israel to take a walk. I submit that he would have never been able to hear it and execute it had he not relinquished control of everything to God. They marched around the first day, the second day. What are we doing the third day? Just be quiet, we're going to take a walk. Fourth day, what are we doing? Be quiet, we're going to take a walk. Fifth day, what are we doing? Be quiet, take a walk. Sixth day, I guess we're walking again. Everybody be quiet. Seventh day, we're walking again. Yeah, but wait, before we go out this time today, we're going to walk around seven times, and then the seven times, we're going to blow the ram's horn, the shofar's going to blast, and when we do it, everybody's going to lift our voice, and everybody's going to shout and worship God, and that's what we're going to do, and the warriors are standing there probably going, seriously? But here's what Joshua learned. He learned that if he gave control then he had to submit to that control. And you know the story. They, they went and did what God told them to do, and the walls fell down flat. It was an amazing, amazing thing. But they would have never gotten through Jericho had they not relinquished control. Had they not taken off their shoes, if jo now Joshua represented to God the entire nation of Israel. If Joshua hadn't taken off his sandal before God, it would have been a different day. You can look at Exodus chapter 3 and verse 5 and you know that Moses took his shoe off, his sandal off. Isaiah chapter 20 says, At the same time the Lord spoke by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and remove the sackcloth from your body and take your sandals off your feet. What was he saying? Come out of mourning and give me control. That's all God's saying to us is give me control. Trust me. I know it doesn't look good. I know it hurts and I know it's difficult. I know you've never faced anything like Jericho before. I know you've never been through the physical stuff that you're going through right now, but I'm asking you to trust me. That's what God was asking of them to do, to trust him with everything. I'll be honest with you. I'm a stubborn individual. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. That's why I, I don't get intimidated that's why if I walk into a room and everybody's glaring at me, everybody's sitting there scowl-faced or won't bother me a bit. Matter of fact, it'd probably just charge me up all the more to keep on rolling. Part of the reason I am the way I am is because a long time ago I took my sandals off. Amen. And I said, God, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, I may not understand it all. See, you know what our problem is? Elizabeth, come play for me, please. You know what our problem is? The problem that you have and the problem that I have, the problem that we have, you ready for it? You ready? You want to know what it is? You want the diagnosis? It's that we always have to be in control. And if we don't understand it, we dismiss it as wrong. Can you imagine the whispers between the warriors? He wants us to take a walk. This guy's flown the coop. This guy's lost his mind. He wants us to get out here in this heat and walk around this city. Well, what if they drop stuff on our head and we get killed today? What if, what if, what if? Folks, there comes a time that you have to, the Bible says in Hebrews, that the just will live by their faith. Hallelujah. Now, if you have been saved, 
then you have to live by faith. If you've come to know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have to live by faith. And here's the really cool thing. God is not subject to your box. He's not subject to you saying, well, you know what? If God doesn't move like that, then then I'm just not believing it. Or if God doesn't move, or if God is moving like that, that doesn't make any sense. Why does he want to walk when we can fight just as well? Listen to me, sir, ma'am, your human mind will get you in trouble every single time. Every time you try to reason stuff away, every time you try to figure stuff out, every time you try to figure, because I'm telling you, I am sure the conversation, you, you've got to understand, we're not talking about 15 people walking around the city wall. You're talking upwards of a million people walking around the city wall, and he's had to communicate to all of them. They don't have a microphone. They don't have a PA system. So they have to do it word by word by word. Could you imagine the camp? Joshua says, we're going to take a walk. And they go, he says, tell them. Okay, we're going to take a walk. Could you imagine what the message was like when it finally got back to people? Have you ever been frustrated with your circumstances and added a whole lot of drama to it? I learned a term this week from the older teenagers, and it's called being extra. Coral. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. So, what does it mean to be extra? Just over dramatic. You got to be extra. Now, extra is not always bad, but extra, in this sense, I'm sure he had some folks in the camp that were extra. I can't believe I sharpened my sword today, and all he wanted me to do is take a walk. I've been sparred with the biggest guys in the camp and I'm ready to cut somebody and all he wants us to do is walk. You ever enjoyed playing a game and then when you got beat, you said, it's a stupid game. You ever done that? I've done that. I, I can see some of them going, this is stupid. In their mind, this is dumb. Joshua was unfazed. He kept walking. Second day. Oh, here we go again. They're super crazy coming out of the camp. There we go. I'm going to take a walk again. And a walk again. I'm sure by the fifth day that maybe some doubt was being fired into the minds and hearts of those walking. And they get up the seventh day expecting the same old, same old. Have you ever had somebody ask you how your day's going or how you been? You go, same old, same old. Anybody ever answered that? that? Yeah, I've done it. How's it going? Same old, same old. Same thing, different day. We got all these cliches, right? But on the last day, got same thing, different day. Joshua goes, no, today, God wants us to walk six times and then seven times and we're going to take the sofars and we're going to sing. That's not what they did. We're going to sing and they're probably like, has this guy lost his mind? Is he, has the desert heat gotten to him? Is he parched? Is he dehydrated? Has he gotten stung by one of them hallucinating bugs? What's wrong with him? I'll tell you what's wrong with him. It's the same thing that needs to be right with us. Is he took his shoe off and he gave God full control. He said, whatever you want to do, however you want to lead, I say yes. I say yes to you. I say yes to your way. I say yes to you. Let's stand together today.
We bless you, Lord, for who you are. You are greater than all things. And there are times you say stuff that we don't get. But take us back to a place where you were sufficient enough for us. Where we obeyed you without question and without fail. God, thank you for the gift of the ability that we have to rationalize, the ability we have to analyze. But Lord, sometimes the gift becomes the curse because we overanalyze you and allow our own humanity to discard your deity. Help us to say yes. To say yes. This morning, one of the most important things that anybody could ever do is say yes to Jesus. That's the most important thing that, that a person could ever do. But I sense in my soul and I sense in my spirit that there's some in the house today that haven't fully said yes. It's been kind of in and out, in and out. And I'm telling you, Eternity is coming. In just a moment, I'm going to invite you to say yes. To say yes and to give all to Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I know I don't normally do this, but I'm going to ask you in this moment if you would Simply bow your head and close your eyes today just for a few moments. But I just sense that there's some folks that need to say yes today. Maybe you need to say yes all over again, but I just, I'm sensing that, that there are those that just hadn't said yes. You're here today. And you will say yes. Even though Jesus may not make sense to you all the time, he may not always seem logical, but today you'll say yes to Jesus. If I can see your hand, just put it right back down. Today I'll say yes to Jesus. Yep, put them down. Put them down. Today I'll say yes to Jesus. Come on, don't wait. Put your hand up. I'll, today I'll say yes to Jesus. Yeah, yeah, put them down. I'll say yes to Jesus. I'll say yes to Jesus. All to him, I'll lay it down. Everything, yeah, go ahead, put it down. Any more, that's what I'm sensing in my heart. Today I'm going to say yes. It doesn't always make sense to me, but today I'm going to say yes. Yeah, yeah, put them down. I'm going to say yes today. Now with every head that's bowed and all the eyes closed, those that raise your hand while no one's looking around, I want you to step out of your seat and come to the altar. I want to pray with you. Come on. No one looking around except those stepping out of their seat. Come on and move from all over the building. Today I say yes. Today I say yes. Today I say yes. Today. I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to try to think I can do it in my car. Today I say yes unequivocally yes anybody else this is an urgent moment when I heard of the trooper whose fiance got taken from this place I'm pretty sure she didn't think that was the day and I'm telling you not as a fear factor but the reality of where we live this dangerous place called earth and nobody's promised tomorrow. And if you need to say yes to Jesus and make some things right between you and God, this is your moment. Step out of your seat. Don't try to, you say, well, I'll do it when I get in the car, in the van, in the car, and the whatever. No, if that was the case, it had been done a, a while ago. But you need to say yes. You need to make some things right with him today. Come on. Now I'm going to ask council and leaders to come 
and we're going to surround you and pray for you. And here's what, here's what I want you to make a prayer of your, of your soul and a prayer of your lips today. It's going to be, Lord, today I say yes to you. If it's yes again, if it's yes in a specific direction, today I say yes. I say yes to you. Even though maybe what I'm going through doesn't make sense, even though what I'm hearing may not make sense, I say yes to you. Your plan doesn't even click in my registry, but today I say yes to your plan. Lord, today here in this altar, we say yes to you. We say yes to you. Whatever you want to do, however you want to use our lives, we say yes. And as we say yes to you, to you we ask, oh God, that you would forgive us for the moments that we didn't listen to your voice. Forgive us for the moments that we closed our ears and we closed our eyes and we closed our heart and we pushed you away. Forgive us for the moments that life choked away the things of your presence and of your word. Forgive us, oh God. We want all of our life to bring joy to you. We want to be a reflection of you in the earth today. Help us as we say yes. And in a spiritual sense, we remove the sandal, we relinquish control of our lives and we say to you, we don't want you to just have one part of our life because you're not a <coughs> compartmentalized God. We want you to have all of our life. <coughs> so we give it all to you today. <coughs> we give ourselves away to you. All to you. All to you. Sovereign hand will be my guide. All to you. May fail and fear surrounds me. You never fail, and you won't start now. And I will call. Keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise. So will rest in your embrace. For I am yours. You are mine. You are mine. All that we are, we lay it down. We lay it down. Where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. Call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are. I will call upon your name. I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine 
Come on, one more time. Let's sing those words together. And I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I Great words, but even harder to live out when obstacles present themselves. I know sometimes when I don't readily just step off the stage and pray with people, some of you might think, well, why didn't he come down? Because I don't feel, there are moments that I feel like the Lord wants me to stay back and allow the body to minister to each other. Because what can tend to happen is this little thing called idolatry that oftentimes takes place. And I believe that the power of God that ministers through the body is significant. But we have got to keep our sandal off. <laughs> the moment you try to take matters into your own hands is the moment you failed. The Bible says that there's a way that seems right to a man or, or to a person, but the way ends in what? Death. In other words, it wasn't the right way. It seemed right. It felt right. It was jubilant, but it wasn't right. So my charge to you today is keep your sandal off. <laughs> trust him. You can't trust him with the obstacle if you can't trust him with the sandal. <laughs> you have to trust him with all your life individually before you can trust him for the big things. And that's hard. That's hard. Because here's the, here's the thing. There's not, not every moment that you're getting ready to face a battle do you have a gigantic moment of realization like Joshua did with the commander of the Lord's army standing right in front of him. There are moments that you don't get the big bang in the face, right, 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 right. but you still have to take your sandals off. There are moments that you might not get the big overwhelming super duper whooper whopper supernatural nudge, but you still have to keep your sandal off. You got to lean to him. Lean to him and not your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So he's good. He's good. Now here's what I believe. If you were serious about what you just stepped forward to commit to, and you said, for whatever level, however, it, it, however your heart was processing the word today, then get ready because just on the heels of that, the Lord started moving Jericho and its walls but he still he you know Joshua didn't just go all right I'm kicking my shoe off I've got no more responsibility no he kicked his shoe off and that prepared him for the Lord said take a walk 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 take another walk oh take a bigger walk with more equipment and then just shout you know <laughs> and he did that they did that and things changed. So some of you get ready because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be trusting God for some miracle testimonies that come into your life because you took your sandal off before him. So just listen to him. Don't get frustrated. Frustration voids and makes you confused. Causes you to hear the wrong voice. Causes you to make the wrong decision. And unfortunately after it we blame God. But don't do that. So, in a spiritual sense, keep your shoes off. Just keep them off. Stay obedient to him. And it'll be all right. Father, thank you for your presence today, for a sobering presence today. Thank you that you know where we are 
Thank you, Lord, that sometimes we're struggling to do what we think you're telling us to do, but we're struggling with that before we've even taken our sandals off. Help us to relinquish control and to take all of our lives and lay it before you and say, we trust you with everything. Joshua relinquishing control wasn't just relinquishing control of himself. He was relinquishing control of his leadership role in Israel. He was laying everything that he was down. And when he did, you moved. But you moved unconventionally. Matter of fact, Lord, you did it in a way that didn't cost them one ounce of blood. Whereas the battle would have cost men's lives but you did it in such a way that you preserved life while taking down the stronghold. We pray do it in our day by your spirit. It will give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name, amen. He's a good God. My prayer, our prayer for you is have a wonderful day in the Lord. Pray for us today as we leave at 2 o'clock. It's great seeing you in the house of the Lord. We'll see you again next Sunday at 10 o'clock. God bless you.